Hello Internet and welcome to my first Outspace tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make sliding doors as you might have seen in my spacebar world. So um, yeah, let's just get right through it. Um, first of all, we're going to GitHub to download the ShaderForge shader tool. Of course you can do this with other shader tools as well, but as I've heard, um, the Shader Forge makes pretty efficient and pretty good shaders um, without actual writing code by yourself. And also, this one is free. And like the only other one I know that works with Outspace is about 50 bucks. And so, um, yeah. Well, the link is up here. I put it, of course, down in the description. And once you get here, you just go on the code and download the zip file. Once you've downloaded the zip file, um, you um, get a, a zip container, of course. You just unpack it and get this ShaderForge folder. Then you just drag and drop this ShaderForge folder into your Unity project. Um, well, 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 somewhere in here. There we go, Outspace. Um, there we have our ShaderForge folder. So you just drag it in here. It takes a moment to install itself but it does all the work by itself for you and now you've got this little tools button up here but yeah much to that later so i've downloaded um this uh, futuristic sci-fi door from the asset store because it's free and just uh, as a showcase um, actually i don't like the model it's pretty badly made but well we don't care about that for now and i um, dragged it into an empty scene um, of course, you can put your, put this into your world that you're building. You can make this a kit and upload it like that. Um, I won't get into that, how you upload a kit or a world. I think there's pretty much uh, many tutorials. Um, well, I just don't want to spend my time on such basic stuff. So, um, yeah, I just dragged and dropped the, the model in here. And actually what I mean about a bad model is that all these small parts are scaled to 100 to get a normal size and usually you just want to have a 1 in here and not a 100 because it messes up some things as we will later see in the shader. But nonetheless, let's get to it. Um, first of all, um, I want to offset my doors into the opening position. So um, oh, my mouse is having some issue right now. There we go. Um, actually, let's let's put this tiny little thing also over here. So this is pretty much the open position. Um, that's because if you want to make it static, uh, sometimes Outspace just puts a collider on it, and then you wouldn't be able to go through the door. And now that with the door wings out of the way, you can always go through the door, because. Um, in the final uh, version of this, um, it's all just done on the shader, on the GPU. So uh, physically the door is not in your way, it's just visually in your way. So, um, And of course uh, only you as a, can see it by yourself. Other players in the world will just see you walking through a wall um, and can only experience it for yourself. So. Um, yeah, but I think it's a nice visual nonetheless. And now let's just get to it. Um, I've made this little folder where I put in um, the sliding door. And now let's um, actually just go ahead and create the shader that we need. Um, first of all, just a little bit talk. Um, usually this comes with a standard shader. We have a color texture, a metallic and smoothness texture. And we have a normal texture. Also we have an occlusion and a mission texture. Um, I will not reuse this these textures, um, but I will show you how to put in the metallic texture. So maybe um, you can get this as well later on by yourself. So first of all, we're going to our tools and open the Shader Forge. Now we've got a new window, and we want to make a new shader, and we can work with the three ones on the left. So the first one is no lighting effects. Uh, the second one is very realistic lighting effects. And the third one is just simple lighting effects. Depends on your kind of style, what you're using. Um, it's always the same um, as for the sliding door parts. Um, but I will go with the lit PVR because that's 
pretty much like the standard shader that you're getting by default when working with Unity. And now let's just put it in our sliding doors and let's call it sliding door. Simple as that. Now it makes some time, uh, may take some time to uh, for the shader to prepare everything. Actually, last time I made this on tested is uh, it crashed my project, but now it's all working fine. And now we've got the basic setup in here. So we have a base texture, uh, base texture or color texture. We have a color tinting uh, variable or property, but and we have our normal map property. And in here we have a slider for the metallic and the gloss. But like I said, in the standard shader, you usually have a metallic gloss texture. So first of all, let's um, set that up as well. So we can use everything like we're used to. Um, with a right click, we can open our um, the collection of all of our nodes. And first of all, we are to add a property, uh, the texture 2D. So properties is everything that will be shown in the inspector and in the material, and then we can just drag and drop it there. And let's call this um, me me metallic smooth. So we know what it is. And usually you just have your red value as the metallic value and the alpha value as your gloss value pretty much a waste of channels, but that's just how the standard shader works. Uh, we can get rid of these two in here, which we'll is uh, delete, and then we got that all set up. So now this is pretty much the standard shader as you used to. Um, of course, you can also make another texture and use that for the emission, and you would just drag and drop the RGB channel of that and the emission. Actually, let's just go ahead and do this. Um, there we go, property, text to the emission. So maybe because this door also has some lighting effects, we can use that as well later on. There we go, put it into the emission. And actually, um, you also usually have a ambient occlusion texture, or you can use it. Although I would definitely recommend not to use too many textures. Actually, this is already way too much textures for, for alt space. Usually you just want to have a base color and a normal map. And if you're smart enough, you can um, bake the, um, the gloss value into the alpha channel of your base texture. But yeah, so much for that. So um, if you want to use an ambient occlusion map, you usually just um, add another uh, property and multiply your ambient occlusion texture by uh, the outcome of this multiply. So it's just like a baked in shadow texture. And actually you can just bake it into the base texture. But yeah, like I said, that's, that's maybe something for another topic and you might also need some special programs to do that easily. So now that we've got that out of the way, um, let's actually make our door slide to the side. And for that we're going to the vertex offset which uh, sets off all the vertex of our 3D model. Uh, a vertex is the edge point of a 3D model. So uh, we want to have some, um, some properties. Um, first of all we want to have a vector 4 and this will be our direction in which the door is going to slide. And next on, we want to have another prop, uh, property and it's just a single value. And this will be the fine tune. And um, so we can later on fine tune how far away the door starts to open and uh, stuff like that. And now we want to have some data. Uh, we want to have some geometry data. We want to have the world position. So we have. Um, the position of our object, where it is in the world. And we also want to use some external data. We want to have the view position, which is the position of our camera. So, um, yeah. Now, um, because uh, this is a three-dimensional position and we don't really care about how far away from um, 
in the, the vertical uh, uh, space you are. Uh, we want to mask out the, the vertical uh, value. Um, maybe you don't want to do that for specific reasons. Maybe if you got a, a two floor um, layer, maybe you don't want to use that, but usually it's a good idea because otherwise the door will um, open and close in pretty weird ways. So let's just um, do that. And for that, we want to go to uh, vector operations and uh, we want to use our component mask. And we just drag in the X, Y, and Z values. Um, by default, it outputs the X or red value. And we want to add a second one, the blue value. So now we just have the X and the Z value and we will do the same for our view position. And there we go. So now we only care about the X and the Z value, and uh, not about the vertical Y value. And uh, next on, we want to have a vector operation called distance. So we can calculate how far away we are from our object. And um, after that, we want to use a multiplier, which is found under our arithmetic. And now we can multiply our distance by our fine tuning value. And after that, we want to have a clamp 0, 1 node, also on the arithmetic, because um, what this does is um, the value of our calculation so far will at maximum be 1 and at minimum be 0. And if you don't, uh, because 0 is our opening state and 1 is our closed state of the door, and we don't want to overshoot these states. I mean, otherwise, uh, the door would just keep on going in the closing direction um, by how further you get away from it. And we want to have it stop um, once you're far enough away from it and don't move any further. And now that we've got all of that set up, we just need to multiply this with our direction. Um, we will set up the direction and the, the fine tuning in our material. And now we can just drag this into our vertex offset. And that's actually pretty much it. Now um, we just need to compile the shader. And whilst doing that, um, I can go over it again. So we have our world position of the object and our position of the camera. We mask out the uh, vertical value of that. So we just don't care about that. And then we get the distance, multiply the distance by our fine tuning value so it doesn't open too early or too, too late. And then we don't want to overshoot the door in one direction or the other. And last but not least, we want to actually put in the direction the door is going to move and set it up in the vertex offset. Now the shader has compiled, we can close the window and now we can start making the materials. So because all these uh, parts of the door are using the same material, we will have to duplicate them. Um, we can just click on the door and open up the mesh renderer and click on the material, the door final. And here we see the door material as it is. It's a standard material as using the standard shader. It has all these fancy te uh, textures, which are way too much, but I don't care about that. And now we can just uh, click on the material in the project and go Control D to duplicate it. And let's duplicate it once again, because everything that moves, uh, moves in a different direction has to use its own material, because the left door is moving to the right and the right door is moving to the left, so they have to use different directions. Let's um, just rename this uh, pretty fast. Uh, let's call this left wing. And let's call the other one right wing so we know which side it is. Of course, it also works from the other side, um, but just for me so I can show, uh, be sure which one to go right now. And now let's just put it on the, um, on, oh no, we can already uh, change the shader. So um, and when we select both of these materials and uh, we go into the inspector, we can um, select another shader. Uh, we got the shader forge here, which where we can find our, our shader forge, 
shaders and have you seen I've made a lot of them but I've got the sliding doors here or if you're just lazy as me you can just type in in the search and select it from there and now of course we don't have our metallic texture and our mission texture set up so let's just drag the metallic texture in here and actually I need to set up the emission texture there we go uh, we kept it in a different folder let's go back to the material folder and now we got it all set up well now let's um, select a door and actually not just the door but also um, this tiny little keypad in here and now we just add our left wing to it and uh, we can already set it up so it's good to go and um, down here we have our direction value and we have a fine tune value let's first set our fine tune value to one so we can actually see something because if you remember it's multiplying our effect um, and if we set it to zero the door won't be moving at all and now we have this little project problem here when you watch the door while i amp up the value it's moving very far just because I got uh, while well, I got a very low value in here and it's just because it's scaled by 100 so if this was scaled by 1 it would be a little bit more normal so actually this is the wrong direction I just need to set it up now where I want the door to be when it's closed and now um, you can actually see um, the orange outline is where the physical model actually is and the model that you see that's just uh, based on the shader instructions that we've created so now that we've set it up we can go a little bit closer and there we can see it starts to move away but of course this is a little bit too close so let's change our multiplication value to 0 0.25 so the lower the value the further away it starts to move so we can see it in here but actually this might be a little bit too far away so let's Put it to 0 0.5 and when we get closer like this 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 looks good so yeah that's pretty much it for the left door let's just do the same thing for the right door and um, well first of all add the right wing material open it up and since we have minus 0 0.005 we can use 0 0.005 set it to 1 and that's it um, you just have to, to figure out the direction um, till it is in the position where you want it. So you will also want to be a little bit away from the thing and set your fine tuning to 1 or maybe even like 10 because then the door won't uh, actually won't nearly move at all until you get really really close. And so you can set it up so that it looks close. Let's put this one to 0 0.5 as well. Uh, the fine-tune value of it and now when we move closer the door is actually opening and when I select all the things um, we can see the outline of the actual doors and yeah so you might want to uh, hide these doors because um, when you get really close they move outside of the frame you might want to hide that but actually if you're this close you might not even see it as a player so it's it's okay i guess and of course it also works from the other direction it's pretty much the same thing and yeah that's pretty much it how you can make a door uh, that's a sliding door um i hope i'll get to rotating doors in the future um i don't just have the time for it right now it should be pretty simple as well but well we see you soon I hope you learned something and um, like I said of course uh, you can use this uh, in your in your alt space world or you can set this up as a kit and upload it like that. Um, I won't get into that now in this video because there is much videos about it. Uh, nonetheless I hope you learned something. Um, please write me in the comments um, if you find this useful, if you want to have some more uh, information on the um, texture channels, how to set up and compress uh, the textures and don't use as many as in here uh, maybe I can make a tutorial on that as well uh, because it really improves the performance and also the visual quality and yeah
If you have any problems with this, uh, just uh, write that in the comment as well. I'm looking forward to help you out with that. And I really hope that this could help you out. And um, also please, of course, leave a like and um, send this video to other Outspace world builders. And if you happen to find some time, um, please come and visit my Outspace worlds and share them with your friends as well. Uh, I'm Kim G in Outspace and um, yeah, made a few worlds so far that are more trying to make a, a photorealistic approach like my beloved Christmas suite and or my beach club which is the first world I've made or the secret garden. So please come by and enjoy my worlds. Uh, I hope you have much success with your worlds as well and uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.